Welcome Virgo to your Virgo December 2021 reading and forecast. Hi I'm Nigel St. James for those of you who are stopping by for the first time and for the subscribers. Gee it's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. In fact I hope everybody's doing well. It's a great time of year. This isn't it December and important for people's spiritual calendars. I mean I think they're from the 28th of November through to the 6th of December. It's Hanukkah for the uh, the Jewish members of our audience then there is on the um, the 12th of December for those who are um, Buddhists isn't that Bodhi day isn't that uh, the day or is that the 8th of December no it's the 8th of December which is Bodhi day which is the day on, upon which tradition has it the Buddha became enlightened then on the the 12th of December of great importance to the Latina and Latino members of the audience is the feast of A Lady of Guadalupe and the tremendous festivals and activities usually surround that celebration. In fact I'm pretty sure that A Lady of Guadalupe is the patron of the country of Mexico and maybe some others if I'm not mistaken. You might let me know in the comments below if that is the case or if that is not the case or what those other countries might be. Now what's also interesting is that from the 21st of December through to oh, the 1st of January I think that's important to the pagan and Wicca members of the audience here and that's the, the festival of Yule or Yuletide and in the middle of it of course is the the winter solstice which is the time upon which the sun, which had been disappearing, starts to make its ascent back and the, the light comes again. The winter solstice, now of course it's the summer solstice in the southern hemisphere, so all the Aussies and South Africans will be grabbing their surfboards, no doubt. But of course the, the sun was always important in many uh, religions. And uh, but of course the, the ancients weren't stupid enough to think that the sun itself was a god or god rather they always at least the ancient Egyptians and the priests and and um, priestesses of the ancient Roman culture <coughs> excuse me saw the sun as being a symbol a mystical symbol of the activity of the, the divine in human affairs and the world and the universe at large and then of course we have speaking of the sun the December the 25th which was the feast day of Sol Invictus in Roman times Sol being sun Invictus being unconquerable so the feast of the unconquerable sun for that period when the sun starts to strengthen again from the winter solstice and of course it's the the feast day I suppose of the birth of Jesus Christ important to Christian tradition now let's take five cards and we'll see what they have to say for you for this month because that's all we need there's the ten of wands what a striking card that is there's the knight of cups speaking of the buddhists here we go there's the ten of cups what a startling image you're going to really enjoy this i think there's the eight of swords and finally what is there let's have a look oh there's the five of discs fascinating fascinating artwork on this deck well, why don't you come down now, sit down here next to me. We'll have a good close look at these cards together while I do the reading for you. Then I think you can see these. They were drawn one, two, three, four, five. Let's have a look at this Ten of Wands. Uh, I'm getting an image here of this Ten of Wands. Do you know in Christian scriptures, there's this thing called the New Testament. It's the last book of that New Testament. It's called the Book of Revelation. And in chapter 6, verse 1 of that book, the text says, if I'm not mistaken, I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come, I looked and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. Well, wheels within wheels. 
The Ten of Wands is the wheel of fire. It is creative and destructive, powerful and transformative. It is heroic and noble, but prone to corruption and tyranny. I have got to tell you from time to time. Now, wands are your divine spark, your life force and energy. You are given something perfect and pure, and then over time it becomes your responsibility to direct it in a way that is good, benefits the world, and achieves your personal potential. Even Plato knew that any person was not just driven alone by this divine spark, but also by the black horse, and would struggle greatly, would achieve greatness only briefly before falling back down. Falling and failing are okay and part of your being and will be part of the whole cycle. No hero, no heroine becomes great while unscathed or without scars and darkness on their heart. Failure, destruction, shattering, being singed to a crisp. These are things, they're all on the outside of the wheel. But in the center, your soul is immortal and pure. Hold on to that idea amidst the shifting and changing energy around you. Remember that this is the courageous heart of the lion in the center. Stay there and let the ups and downs spin around you. Remember this, burdens are the foundation of ease, and bitter things, the forerunners of pleasure. Now this card's astrology is that of Saturn ruling the third decan of Sagittarius at 13th to the 22nd of December. Now Sagittarius, well, it wants to expand, doesn't it? It wants to express its optimism and spiritual side. Where is Saturn? Saturn, well, in many respects, is all about restriction and it represses the expansive nature of Sagittarius. So we get the idea of some restriction here. There are perhaps repressed feelings energy being held back, parting, isolation. Sometimes I think you might feel quite aggressive, you know. You might feel overburdened by things because you do tend to take on too much from time to time, don't you? You certainly do. And make sure that your health is going well. Do make sure of that. You might be feeling the pressure, you see. You could feel in this time that you have no control over circumstances or that you're a victim of your own success even. But here, Sagittarius, the Sagittarian readiness to communicate is blocked by Saturn and maybe some fear arises. If you fear rejection, disapproval or punishment, you will begin to repress your own impulses. Your strength, your vitality and your life energy can't then be expressed. Now repressed, these energies turn into irritation, rage and violence towards things. If this aggression finds no external outlet, you may turn it inward upon yourself and it may express itself as, well, as self-denigration or even depression in all of its aspects, maybe even as an illness. But I think this energy here for you is an invitation. It is for you to recognize and end your repression and restriction of your own life impulses. This is a step towards taking responsibility for yourself and freeing yourself from unjustifiable moral restrictions and limitations. Now, as I say, it is possible that you might uh, find that your will to do something is blocked no matter how hard you try. You might feel that you can't achieve it. And the danger is that you can begin to lose faith in yourself and your ability to get what you want, you know. But this card is not saying that this is something that you should do. In fact, it's saying that this is a warning to you, that where you do feel blocked, do not lose faith in yourself. 
Now, whether you are consciously repressing yourself or not, recognize that there is much more which you would like to express, to experience, more to enjoy, more to celebrate, dare. There are some things I think that you have always wanted to say to certain people. What are those things and who are those people? I think that you can, for the time being, just for yourself, express those things right now and say this to yourself. I have the right to follow my feelings and life impulses. It has been given to me by God. Well, staying on that top line, why don't we have a look at this thing here, which is the Knight of Cups. Fascinating painting here. Gee, can you have a good look at that? This is interesting. Now, I'm, I'm going to just chop off at the bottom there this so you can have a look at it because there's some things in here which I find interesting here. Well, the whole, this is the night, and the whole world really is in the armor. Now, at the bottom is water over a carp. Now you might see this carp fish down there. I don't know if you can quite see that. Uh, yeah, now that's a symbol for Ningitsa, which was the Sumerian serpent god, I suppose. Now, between here, there are the roots. You can see in here the roots of three trees. In the center is the Holy Grail that you see here with three tears of blood. Can you see those coming down? Now the armor on each sleeve contains a cherub. Uh, Ariel, the Lion of God, is on this right arm. And here, over here, is... Well, that would be Michael, which is who is like God, that means that. Now behind the grail, you'll see there a gold pyramid, and there's a physical ray of light that comes out of the emerald eye of God, I suppose, atop of it. Now just the below the eye there is the ecliptic with the zodiac signs on it. See them in the yellow? I'll just get my finger out of the way so you keep it in focus there. Now above that are flaming wheels made with golden lotus petals which edge the whole of the armor itself. You can see all the lotus petals around there. Now there's a black gold embroidered shirt. Now the white lotus has risen from the roots all the way from the bottom up through the water and past some serpents that are hanging around there, through the grail and through the pyramid and through the eye and just across the abyss here. In this, noted by this black here, one sees the face of God looking down upon it. Now court cards can be male or female and I actually take that face of God as being female. Now important to you during this period are going to be Scorpio and Libra here, I think. Now why am I getting that? Why am I getting that? This is uh, esoterically uh, as a, a night it's air and in cups it's water. So you can have volatility or you can have equilibrium. But I'll say it's a younger man of some subtlety, secret violence, craft. Could well be an artist who has a surface mask, which masks uh, an intense passion. Now this is a person I think who has the ability to detach, as Libra is an air sign, from the heavy, intense, controlling emotions of Scorpio. And that's why I'm getting that Libra and Scorpio around here. Uh, I think that this shows someone who is really in control of their emotions and they can be. But this detachment and coolness on the surface can often, I think, be a front for insecurity and fear. Also, usually the feminine asks the masculine to go deeper into his feelings, to join her in the place where two meet one in relationship, and there can be a reticence on the part of the male to do that sometimes. 
there is a person here. Look, with this person here, as fast as a river flows, so does he, trying to get the most out of life as is possible. There's a great degree of craving around here. This is a person who is, I think, completely without conscience in the ordinary sense of the word. He is perfectly ruthless and cares intensely for power, for information and his own aims. As someone who feels no responsibility for others. And ultimately, it's not somebody that you can rely upon. But paradoxically, it's somebody who is, I think, has much to offer an immense ability. But as I say, they can't be re replied uh, uh, relied upon because ultimately his responsibility is to himself. Now he can be secretive, hiding his deepest desires. And again, I'm getting the feeling of someone around arts or music. It could be in fashion, things to do with that. Retail also is where I'm getting things here. But this is someone who can have good insight into other people's lives as they have usually done it all himself. But at worst, this is somebody who is cruel, selfish, and reckless. Look, the other message that's coming through to me with respect to this card is that you should accept your sexual needs and passions and live them out with awareness. You will discover a lot in this process. Give yourself totally to that experience and observe yourself in it. Now what? secret wishes are you unwilling to admit to. Now spend some time each day visualizing yourself with your desires, but without getting lost in them, I suppose, and say to yourself, I now live out my sexual desires. This makes me a more vital and fulfilled person. Now, I want to have a look at the card underneath it for no other reason. I just think it's a really great painting. And let me see, what can we immediately have of it? It's the Five of Discs. Here is a man. Is there anything down there? No, we'll, we'll take it. Remember, just remember it's the Five of Discs, okay? Well, this is interesting, isn't it? Look at all these snakes and everything everywhere. Heaven is in the breast. Eternity is now. Now, gently parting the serpentine shell. You see this snake? This is a snake which is eating its own tail. That's known as an Ouroboros, and it is eternally eating its own tail. It's a sign of infinity because the heart contains the immortal soul. The five of discs for you is the temple of the soul, spirit filling the fourfold elements of earth. Now this man here is the opposite of the fool. That fool is not kind of really in nature. Rather, the spirit of this man has fully descended into flesh. He is completely surrounded by serpents. He wears them. Still, there is paradise in his heart. And it is the pit that you have to go down into to retrieve the gold, the knowledge of yourself, of your destiny, then you have to bring a balance between that world and the one you live in. The pit is the snakes and the heart. The ring is the snake around the heart. This five here really is, I think for you, internal. It is paradise heaven that you find within yourself. Now the snakes are symbolic of flesh. And interesting to think of the serpent in the Garden of Eden story in the, I think it must be the second chapter of Genesis, which is the first book of the Hebrew Bible and Christian Bibles. Now, though that snake there, to paraphrase it, tempts you and flesh that introduces you to the ideas of good and evil, life and death, suffering and shame. Now, we were on one hand expelled from the Garden of Eden, but I think the Garden of Eden is actually a spiritual place and we decided to descend down into the world of space and time to do the work of God, to bring together those things that can raise it back up to the oneness with the divine. But there, deep 
in the heart, you still have the Garden of Eden where you are not subject to the rules of the physical world, where you still live in a state of no shame or suffering or pain or death. There is only life and love and abundance, a paradise. You know, you are the guardian of you, your own paradise. What you were looking for with being born, searching, questing, is for knowledge, knowledge of yourself, knowledge of purpose. And here, after going down into the deepest pits of hell, you know that heaven is not in the sky, it is in the breast. Eternity is not somewhere else, it is now in the present moment. But the astrology of this card can produce some issues. It's Mercury ruling the first decan of Taurus, the 20th to the 30th of April. So you have the speed and fluidity of Mercury, rule weighed down really by slow, heavy Taurus. And the fives are generally, well, they have an association with Mars to me, which is aggressive and unstable, and the fives are associated with instability after a temporary stability, which has been brought by the four, which comes before it. So there could be a moment during this period where you feel pessimistic, where there are some problematic communications with other people. Maybe relationships threaten to break apart. You might feel that everything dissolves at your touch and you seem to be condemned to observe while everything around you falls apart. Well, this isn't really what's happening back. There could be some setbacks. There could be some worries. You might have a lack of belief in yourself. You could even feel like you are isolated or that you are down on your luck. But because you have drawn this card, it says that you are ready to look at your situation as it is. You now have an opportunity to free yourself by initiating the necessary discussion, either with a partner or with yourself. Only clear and open communication will facilitate progress. Now, in what areas or situations are you not clear and decisive enough? With which people do you need to clarify things? Say this to yourself. I am ready to look at my life as it is and trust in the process of resolving my fears. I am straightening out my life. And when you feel that you are alone and everything, remember that you have drawn this card here. Remember the divine feminine that I see there. Well, the divine feminine, I think, is saying to you, hear me and understand me well my youngest and dearest child. Let nothing frighten you nor grieve you. Let not your heart be disturbed. Do not fear that sickness nor any other sickness or anguish. Am I not here who is your mother? Are you not under my protection? Am I not your health? Are you not in the crossing of my arms? What more do you need? Well then, where does that take us to? It takes us to, I think, I'll oh, we'll have a look at this and we'll leave that 10 till the end. Here is a gate. Looks like old Babylonian yeah. Actually, interestingly, I've just done a quick, there's, um, the number of bricks here is half of 78 and the 78 cards in the tarot. And these writings here on the side there are inscriptions which refer to Jerusalem and Babylon. When you walk through that gate, there's no coming back. Now, this is Jupiter ruling the first decan of Gemini. Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. And to get into Gemini, 
It has to go 180 degrees away from home and therefore it's in detriment. So Jupiter is weakened and the inquisitive nature of Gemini inhibits Jupiter. So a weakened to Jupiter means that maybe you feel you can't get what you want. But I think that this is because of too many distractions that could be going on. Some of which you might have even created yourself. With this uh, gate that's getting here, I feel in a sense that there could be that you have a fear of failure taking things forward and that what you're doing is you're holding, your, you're holding yourself back. It's almost as if you are quitting before you even start because you think you are going to fail. Well, I say let things rest and develop on their own for a while. As long as doubts concerning these decisions remain, don't go for anything new. Jupiter is the harbinger of unforeseen and unexpected change for the better. A problem which you're looking at now, which seems insoluble, will find its own solution in its own way. What alternatives are you torn between? Just relax and let things develop. Let Jupiter take some time out, do something different, and let Jupiter come in and let things settle down. Come back to things with new eyes, because you could have analysis paralysis. You do tend to think things through with every single detail covered off, don't you? You're a perfectionist. It has to be said, and sometimes that can lead to analysis paralysis. So I think what you might be doing is saying to yourself, I'm working myself into a shock. So say this, I am relaxed and I trust life. Now, I think I referred earlier to that book of Revelation, didn't I, which is in Christian scriptures. Well, that same book, in chapter six, this time in verses three to four, I'm pretty sure it says, when the lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, come, and then, then what happens? Well, another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make men slay each other. And to him was given a huge sword. Do you know, you recognize and should know that you possess a divine spark from God inside you. But is it also possible that you have a small amount of the abyss in there as well, of chaos? The Ten of Cups is the wheel of water, the ever-changing fortunes of the heart. The red horse is the heart, his thundering hooves, the smooth beat of the turning wheel, which pump the blood, drawing in and pushing out the ancient bloodline. Now you ride this horse in your short life as stewards of the royal blood. It passes through you and onto your children if you have them and from them to their children. Now this skeletal figure here, that's a depiction from Renaissance art up until about the 1800s, which says, which is a fashion called memento more, which is Latin for remember you will die. And that is saying to you that you should always be prepared for it because death comes to each of us equally and often without warning. So live life to the fullest every day. Seize the day. Love, joy, relationships, and their opposites, war, loss, grief, sadness, suffering, separation, they're all part of the wheel of water they make up life for you. This is a wonderful card and speaks of overflowing love in all relationships with you at the moment. And a time which is going to carry probably, I think, through into the good first half of next year as well. That's it for you this month. Well, I thought that was really, really interesting. It looks like it's going to be a great month for you and don't you deserve it? You really do, particularly coming up for this time of the year. It's busy for everybody, wherever you happen to be, and it's a wonderful time of year and it's a wonderful time for you. Now also, don't forget, I have done a 2022 yearly calendar reading where I use some beautiful Renaissance uh, art cards. 12 cards, uh, one for each month of the year, which I think that you'll find delightful. 
and it'll be a and it's a and it's in particular it points out what a good year it's going to be for you but until then have a look at that but until then I look forward to seeing you again next month and remember though always and one thing and it is this that you are a legend and I look forward to seeing you again next month and until then it's bye for now.